Okay, I think we can start. I know we're expecting attendees to log in, but while we're waiting, uh, let me welcome all of you to the Indigenous Language Institute Web Symposium Series. My name is Ine Slaughter. I'm the Executive Director of ILI and your moderator today. Today's presentation featuring Dr. Sheila Nicholas will last approximately uh, 55 minutes. After the presentation, we will take a 10 minute break. And um, after the break, we'll start the Q&A session. During the break, keep the window open on your device. In other words, do not press the leave button because once you do, you cannot be readmitted. To submit a question for the presenter and her panel, uh, use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Questions will be answered during the Q&A session after the break. Um, to add to the background information on Sheila that you already read in the invitation, um, Dr. Nicholas has worked with ILI since 2011 as instructor for ILI's language training workshops. Many of you have met her, I'm sure. Um, and we are very honored to have her on our training team as she brings experiences as a second language learner, um, as an adult second language learner, and as an educator. So now may I present to you, Sheila Nicholas. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my PowerPoint screen with you so that we can get started. Um, thank you for that um, introduction, May. I'm going to introduce myself to you in our language, our mother's language, our people's language, Hopi. Uh, on the left-hand side, I provided a loose uh, English translation of what I'm going to say so you can follow along. Um, Ahula nata pam pikos wungwa. Nikyang nubikos hainem pam kwa wungwa. Nik Milton Nicholas pam is wungwa. A mummy wungwa. Nuk songo pang up sino. So um, the title of this presentation uh, How do we do this? Who will come? Uh, a virtual language learning family affair uh, was really an answer to uh, my long held aspiration to work with my family uh, and put all of my relearning experience of the language uh, for my family. So here, uh, my question was, who will come if I start this? And I want to, in to introduce to you those of my family who did come to this virtual language learning family affair, which was actually initiated ironically by COVID-19 because it opened up virtual spaces that we could take advantage of. So here, um, just to introduce uh, who are my uh, family members who, have, who are working with me right now, these are this picture here in the left in the black and white is my sister who is deceased. Um, she had two daughters who are also my daughters in the Hopi tradition. And that was LaDonna and Bonnie. And Bonnie has three daughters. So they're my sisters, Ethel's granddaughters. And again, in the Hopi tradition, they're my granddaughters as well. And that's Brianna, Brandy, Brooke, and my own daughter, who is, um, name is Rachel Zoe. And we have been beaming or Zooming together uh, from 
uh, California, where LaDonna is, and where Bonnie, Bri Brianna Brandy, and Brooke are um, working from, as Washington State, and my daughter, who is currently working in Hawaii, and I am in Arizona. So uh, these are um, my family members who are working with me, as well as uh, being here with me right here for the presentation. Not all of them, but uh, they are here. What we'd like to uh, share with you today about the work we've been doing uh, is a little bit of a context about birthing my aspiration. And then secondly, I'm going to have my learners present themselves as hopisinom, and they will also um, briefly um, you know, give you uh, an idea of why, uh, in answer to why do I want to learn hopilave bai, they have been asked that question by colleagues and friends. So they have been asked that question and here they're going to share that. And then we'll move into the question, how did we start? And it's a, it's a matter of us sharing the language work that we have actually embarked on and on this journey. And then we want to be able to give you a brief reflection from the learners answering what has been my experience learning Hopi Lava'i and mine what has been my experience teaching Hopi Lava'i. Here, I, I want to say that I'm a relearner of my language. I'm also number six in a family of eight. Um, I, but I was raised as an only child uh, by my uh, parents, Pickles um, Heinem and Milton Nicholas. Uh, and part of that journey was that uh, we left the reservation when I was eight years old. But prior to that, all of us were first language learners of Hopi. And for the most part, all of us uh, did raise, were raised off the reservation for a lot of our lives. So we shifted in our language. In particular, I shifted to English at about age eight. Uh, once we uh, moved to the border town of Winslow, which is about 60 miles away, and from that time on with in, uh, my mother telling me in my best interest to focus on learning English and putting away my Hopi, uh, I did that. And so I actually spent a lot of my adult years uh, only understanding Hopi, but not um, able to produce or think in the Hopi language. So when that realization came to me, I started my journey of relearning uh, the language. And it seems to me that I think that that was my destiny because uh, in relearning the language, I was able to reconnect to a lot of my um, important aspects of what it means to be a Hopi person and in particular, a Hopi woman. So uh, in that sense, I, I feel like uh, even though it was a, a difficult journey to relearn my language, it actually created a lot more of the foundation I needed for what I'm doing today with my, my family, who are also um, experiencing uh, the need to reconnect to who we are. So here I want to give my um, learners uh, who are here. This is Brandy, uh, Brooke, their mother, Bonnie, and um, uh, Brianna, who, who to, to be able to introduce themselves to you. And then to, once they finish that in the Hopi Lava'i, then we're gonna come back and ask them to just share briefly with you uh, a response to why do I want to learn my mother's, my people's language? So I'm going to stop share for right now and have, um, them start that. And uh, Brooke, I mean, uh, uh, Brandy, um, muti mani, um, namatak nani. Um, no kwang galung va, no Brandy Felix yan matsewa, no Bonnie Kivama yuta. Bamka Wungwa. No Nazario Felix uh, Nata. 
Pam Castil Wungwa Nu Songopangak Sino Brook Um Tuadni Um Haki The Felix Yan Matsiwa Nu Kalungwa Nu Baniki Vema Yuta Pam Kalungwa Nu Nazari Felix Nata Pam Castil Wungwa Nu Shinopanak Sino Anta Asquali We Kushansa. <laughs> Bum Nut Harris Kivema Nata Kau Wang Wungwa You gotta ask Brianna. Brianna. Um, Brianna, um, do what hockey? Do what me? Do what me? No, Brianna Felix. Yan Matsua. Just turn it down. That's what I did. Sorry, hello. Okay, no Brianna Felix Yan Matsiwa, no Kalwungwa, no Bani Kirvema Yuta, Pam Kalwungwa, no Nazario Felix Nata, Pam Kastilwungwa, no Songopanga Xino. Now, I would like each one of you to just uh, answer the questions. Why do you want to learn your mother's, your grandmother's, our people's language? Brandy, you might want to go first. Yeah. This is a question we get a lot, but for me, it's to connect with my people, not only my people and the Hopi people, but also my family. It gave me a great opportunity to learn from someone I trust already, which is Muso Oshila. And, you know, she offered this information to us and I was like, yeah, I'm going to take it. Brooke, how about you? Um, I didn't know who to ask originally for help to learn the language because uh, I grew up on the third Mesa. So learning about I was always told that you're supposed to learn from your mother and my mother's from the second Mesa so I never knew who to ask and the main reason why I really want to learn is so that when I go back I know how to talk to everyone and I won't feel so distant. I, mine is just for the experience and the uh, opportunity to connect with Sheila because we um, didn't get to see each other as often. And both my parents are passed on, so it was hard to ask any, for inf any information. So I'm thankful for Sheila to help us. And um, I honestly feel um, lucky uh, to have someone show me this and be connected to something that no one else is able to have. So I feel responsible in carrying it on, but also very interested in learning where I come from. 
Asquale. I'm going to go back and um, share my screen to continue. Can you see the screen again? Just want to make sure. Okay. So uh, thank you, Asquale, for that. It's important uh, for me to hear that as well. So how we started. Well, I, this is a, a brief um, overview of the way we started in reflecting on it, uh, the, the many things that we actually um, engaged with. We began a little bit with just talking about our cultural practices. We all uh, have been away from the reservation and not participating in many of the cultural traditions and practices. So at the time that we are doing lessons, if there is a particular tradition going on, like when we, we started this in February of 2021, um, it was the time of the Katsingam coming into our villages and having night dances. So that's what I shared with them, my understanding of that um, uh, ceremonial and uh, religious rituals and practices that we have. We also um, uh, talked about the Hopi perspective of women. And then they had a particular question about weddings, Hopi weddings. So one of my uh, community members and uh, relatives, uh, Bernita Tuahuyoma, uh, accepted my invitation and came and talked to us about her experience going through a Hopi wedding. Um, I've also had my two brothers, my oldest brothers, um, uh, Ernie and um, my other, uh, other older brother, Michael, come in and joined us and gave us the, the male perspective and sometimes giving us some information about uh, the language that we didn't know. Or my brother, Mike, who also shifted in his language, um, explaining uh, to us how thankful he was because he hadn't uh, been introduced or remembered. And this was all bringing back his memories. So uh, some of the um, other uh, language learning that we actually uh, participated in that we're going to share with you is uh, a roll call or an attendance protocol. And then we also introduced and uh, worked with Hopi Lavai sounds and in particular, the pronunciation of words, uh, which becomes really important to understanding um, and being able to articulate uh, what you're thinking. We also incorporated daily expressions. And then uh, this, um, the way we identified us today was actually a recent um, language work that we embarked on but there's a particular reason why I wanted to share that. And then uh, we are just now working on what people have looked at as situational language, where we are creating a Hopi world space in our home or a language nest for our, our Lava'i to be used more on a daily basis, because it's been a challenge. And then maybe a little bit of reflection on some of this work that we've done. So we're going to uh, move into just sharing exactly what these, um, language, uh, this language work looks like. So in the Lavai, uh, the attendance protocol, it was just a roll call. When we came together, you know, I would just call out their name and they would, and I taught them how to respond by saying, I'm present, or if someone wasn't there, uh, to report on that absence and to wel welcome those who were present as well as to question and re, um, ask a response about why those others might be absent. And then we added the end of the session leave taking. So what we'll do is we'll just um, quickly do a roll call demonstration for that. And, and you can see um, how that actually worked out. So uh, Brandy, Haki. Hakim Yafya, Hakim Iki, Brandy. No, Yafya. Aspali Umbitu. Aspali Umbitu. Brooke. No, Yafya. Aspali Umbitu. Bonnie. No, Yafya. 
Ask Brianna. Yes, eh. Ask Wally um, um, Zoe. Zoe. Pam Zoe Pam Kayefe. Is Ohi. Pam Hakami. Pee. Ladana. Pam Kayefe. Pam Kayefe. Is Ohi. Pam Hakami. Pee. Oh, wait, LaDonna is here. She's here. Oh, by Yefe. LaDonna. Asquale and Pitu. We, Asquale and Pitu. Da. Umana Vasiani. Umana Vasiani. Umana Vasiani. We, Navasiani. So that is a, a demonstration of how we start and open each session. Uh, and that was, it just became a routine and we would just keep scaffolding or building on it. So we only started with I'm present uh, and then we added and I would respond with welcoming them. And then we added on reporting and absence and responding and then adding the leave taking. So all of this became um, just part of our routine, and uh, it, I believe they're really familiar with, with this language. The other thing that uh, we uh, uh, introduced and, and worked on was the sounds, and in particular, the long and short uh, vowel sounds in Hopi are really critical. There's a, a, they're very subtle and hard to hear, but a, a, a speaker and a, a person who is fluent in the language, it's very um, uh, easy for them to hear. And so oftentimes it can really change the meaning of what you're saying if you don't have uh, a good uh, mastery of the, the long and short vowels. Uh, there are also challenging sounds in our language that we, we um, went ahead and I introduced them to it so we could practice those and be aware of them. We also learned some vocabulary, not that it was a lesson, but uh, the anecdotes that we wanted to share with you about this, this part of our uh, language work really demonstrates that just introducing them to this kind of uh, language helps them learn things that they pick up that wasn't necessarily the, um, the, uh, the expected outcome, although for that particular lesson, it, it just was something people talk about as being picked up. So uh, these are um, pictures of uh, the pictures I used in order to introduce the long vowel sounds. Uh, an anecdote here is that uh, for the short I uh, that I will show you now, well, after this one here, these are words, the, the short I sound that's, um, that's next. This is the word for flower. And uh, I use the gestures uh, for uh, short being this and then long for this because in the uh, Hopi, uh, the vowel sound is the same for the short and the long. It's just making sure that it's uh, stretched out a little bit more. So for the short I, the, uh, the word for flower is sihu. And then it's very important that it's distinguished from the long I, which is sihu. The long I means intestines. So it's definitely important to make sure that um, these sounds are, um, uh, are pronounced accordingly. And then uh, there is an anecdote of connection that um, uh, Brooke will share about the Hopi word for the juniper tree, which is hoku. You, you want to quickly share that? Um, oh, sorry. Uh. Yes. So when I was younger, um, my, uh, my grandpa, he would tell me to take the little berries off of the juniper tree and then put them under my tongue so that I wouldn't get thirsty on our walks. Mm -hmm. 
And that was it. <laughs> okay, Asquelli. Uh, the other sounds that we worked with were to distinguish between the K and the Q, and in particular where it was uh, formed. So these were some of the images that uh, we used in order to distinguish between them. For the K sound uh, on the left, we start out with G C and then G son B and then G Y and then G P and then G S T L A V I. And the, the the location of how uh, that sound is produced in our mouths is uh, pretty much um, uh, Brandy. I would like you to explain how you understood the difference between this as soon as I'm uh, finished showing the images. Just keep going. So these are words that helped me um, introduce the, um, the sound for K and Q, and also for making sure that we practiced how that was produced. So uh, Brandy, do you want to um, explain your understanding of the difference here? So the K sound is like a regular English language K. It's at the top of the mouth, like k -k with like the middle of your tongue. Can you say one and of the words? Can you say one of the words for the image? Okay. Which is water. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and the Q sound, it's more, it's at the way back of your throat, almost like it's, it's like a, but like with a, a sharpness at the back, like. Can you give us? We had to practice that a lot. Which of the pictures are you, uh, can you demonstrate with or? Ex I, I do ca caso, which is burp. <laughs> that one's fun. Caso. Okay, Great. and uh, you remember the uh, word for this? I don't see the cursor. Okay. Can you, can you uh, how about this one here? Can you see my cursor? No. Okay, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. So uh, these sounds here are, um, my cursor is not being visible. <laughs> so we have at the top we have kihu, uh, kisonbi, kui, gape, gastil lavai. For the Q, it's ka ka for corn, kalwungwa, kapu, kaso, and Friday would be kavo. And then here we have also uh, the Q sound for ka, which means no, or to um, the opposite of a, a positive. So it's a negative. So if you are talking about um, uh, being Hopi, you would say Hopi, or if you're being unhopi, you would say ka Hopi. There were other, uh, the N and NG are also difficult sounds. So uh, also where that's produced uh, and how we describe that is the N is in the, uh, again, right in the mouth area uh, and your tongue is touching the back of your teeth. So um, Brooke, can you tell me one of the words for N? Nova. Nova, Nova, which is the food. And then the NG, it's a, your tongue, which is hanging mid, it's just hanging in the middle of your mouth. It's not touching your teeth or the roof of your mouth. And so it makes the sound a ng. And uh, we have a, a, a very good um, example of that, that Brandy can share with us on the man who has an empty wallet. Uh, what, is, what is that one, Brandy? <laughs> that one's Nastasiva. <laughs> which means broke. I'm just saying, uh, no money. No money. And yeah. why is that? Where are you using that beyond um, this lesson or outside this lesson? I was honestly everywhere, but 
Uh, I use it a lot. My mom, Bonnie, and I work together as cashiers. So uh, if somebody's card gets declined or if they have to leave the store to go get more money, I just go, Nasta Siva. And we're <laughs> chuckling. <laughs> so uh, that's a really uh, wonderful example of how um, when you pick up the language because it's relevant in a particular place in your life, it, you get, it gets used. So thank you for that. And then uh, we, we're gonna move on to the daily expressions. Uh, these were my, um, I guess my goal uh, in, in my belief that we have to use language that is going to be used in your daily life. Um, and expressions are very good. Uh, in, and also it was a way that I could introduce the pronoun for I, which is n. And um, also thinking about how to um, start using these, I found uh, images off the internet that really demonstrated visible gestures and what we now call body notes. And also it gave me the opportunity to work on uh, scaffolding phrases. Uh, some of the things that we addressed and noticed in reflection uh, were challenges to use how no matter if we use them in daily life, why it's a challenge for us to not use them in the Hopi language. Uh, and at the beginning of each lesson, I will ask the girls, you know, you know, a progress report. How are you doing with what you've learned today? And the earlier responses would be, I don't have any time to practice or I have no one to talk to. Uh, the other um, uh, challenge was they were not comfortable practicing and using the language if they weren't sure of the pronunciation. And then the other thing was that they critiqued that the images were all not part of our Hopi world, meaning that they were not Hopi people in the images and it was actually, uh, it bothered them a bit. So I, we have some anecdotes to address those as I uh, share with you. And, and my whole response to this was, in terms of the time, that's up to you. You have to really think about changing uh, your lifestyle to a point. And uh, it kind of goes along with the sports um, uh, if we're all motivated to do more exercise, it's got to be a lifestyle change. And that one, I told them, the onus is on you. I, I, I can do what I do at our weekly sessions, but beyond that, you need to take that into your daily life. The other one, though, of the pronunciation, it's actually my responsibility. So we turn to trying to use on, um, the microphone on iPhone text the challenge to us was not all of us had an iPhone. So that didn't get to everyone. So we used a tool called Vokuru. And also, uh, this was also an example of how the one time that I could not meet uh, because I was in an area where I had no internet connectivity, uh, my daughter, Rachel, uh, took over and uh, created a homework assignment and that's what we are looking at as a learner identity, that you take the responsibility to move on it, um, even if the instructor isn't there. So I just, we just want to share with you that work. So these are some images of the daily expressions that we, we could, um, that I, and these were, I selected these, I searched for these. So the input was actually instructor uh, generated in order for me to say, I think this is a way this would work. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, maybe uh, we will um, just take turns. We'll go Brandy, Brooke, Brianna, Bonnie, and just take turns on, on saying the, the expression because of the, the microphone and the, the echo. So um, we'll go ahead and we'll go to, um, we'll go in the counterclockwise. 
the uh, direction. So can you see my cursor? Okay, Brandy, let's go first. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. I just now, okay. Brandy, go ahead. Is enough? Do something? Well, first of all, just say that, just say the expression. Are we starting with is enough? Oh, wait, just leave it at that. Is Anna? Is Anna. And then uh, Brooke? Is how? Going the opposite. Okay, you went this way. Is okay. how? Um, Brianna? Is it a. Bonnie? I always get confused with that one. Okay. Uh, Brooke, can you help her? Yes. So it's okay. it's Ohi. It's Ohi. Ohi. Uh -huh. And uh, we'll go back to Brandy. Um, is Uti? Okay. Uh, Brooke. Uh, is Uti? Okay. And Brianna. Is Eta? No. Oh, it's Ohi. No. Is Iyo? Oh, said all ones. Okay, and then um, Bonnie. Is Uti? No. Is Utu? Utu. Uh huh. So this, these are the expressions. Uh, is Anna? Is Utu? Is Io? Is Uti? Is Uti? Is Ohi? Is Itze? Is How? And Brandy, what's this one? This. The right in the center. Oh, it's a me. It's a me. So once we learned these expressions, then I was able to scaffold on these. So I am going to um, say the expression here, and then you will say the, the other part. So I'll start with Brandy again. Brandy is Anna. No, do something. Is Anna. Is Anna. This one up here. Yeah. Is that not it? No. Oh. Okay. Is Anna. I don't remember that one. Okay. 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 Brooke. Is how. Okay. Maybe, Brandy, you want to go ahead and do that? No cana votita. No su anti. No su anti. How about is it's a brandy? You remember this one then? Ka kasu anti. Kasu anti. Kasu anti. Uh huh. And Brianna is it the? No kohamaki. Mm -hmm. Bonnie is eel. Uh, no, tu sunti. Tu sunti. Oi. And then uh, Brandy is uni. Mm, Gunahoya. Gunahoya. Right. So uh, that's so cute. Uh, so these are the expressions that we learned first, and then we scaffold uh, some phrases uh, in response to those uh, expressions. But again, in order to address, um, address the challenges that we were having, in particular the pronunciation, we um, resorted or we, we ended up utilizing a tool called Vokaroo. And uh, in order to address the idea of no time and no one to talk to, uh, I said, well, it has to be a mindset and a change in lifestyle 
So here is and uh, the first thing that you can learn to do or practice or make a part of your daily routine, the minute you open your eyes when you wake up in the morning, even while laying there, just say a prayer or a greet the sun. So we took a picture of that and then we added the voice to it just to demonstrate. So this would be oh, This was another one uh, uh, that they used their own pictures here saying that the images that we used earlier for the expressions weren't really part of our world. So we um, the homework assignment that Rachel gave to them was to get those pictures from our real world. So this one had to do with like the little dog in the expression. It's uni. It's uni. So I provided, they provided the images and I provided the pronunciation. Uh, all of us um, have this and it was a matter of, uh, if you want to practice pronunciation uh, and hearing it, that was my voice. Uh, this was another image. It's a day. It's a day. Sorry about that. I pushed that. What I wanted to actually say about this image was uh, some of the funny things that happen as we have been doing this language work was the expression is, I'm, I'm scared, uh, I'm scared. And I kept trying to figure out what is in that little box that she's scared of. And then it turns out that this was a, a, a table, a table in the, back, uh, in the background. And really the image was a little bug that uh, Brandy was holding. And that's what she was uh, responding to but it, uh, we didn't catch that until we uh, all got together and took a look at it. And it was really another part of the, uh, you know, ways that language work can happen, but also be fun. So here's another one here. Um, no, him, bang, pao, me. No, him, bang, pao, me. Oh, okay. The anecdote for this one was um, Brianna here. It was a, a phrase that she requested. She said, how do, she said, how do I say, or how do you say? That's the phrase she wanted to learn. So I offered it to them. Nahin pangkauni, and I, the, the way that they were able to pick this up and internalize it a lot quicker was that they all pointed out that it actually sounded a little bit like uh, a familiar language that they heard. Um, I mean, it's familiar to them because they've heard it. And that was Chinese. They said, that sounds like it's Chinese. And I, I just said to them, if it helps you remember it, that's fine. So that was another uh, kind of anecdotal um, uh, experience that we saw in that. And then finally, this one was another example. Uh, of going uh, shopping. I apologize. I keep hitting the um, curse uh, the mouse instead of um, the stop sound. But this one, uh, what I wanted to point it out, point out was the uh, learner um, identity, uh, how it's demonstrated here that they wanted to uh, learn the phrase, I'm going shopping. And they put all of this thinking together on how this image actually uh, clearly shows that, that they're going shopping with the number of bags that are so empty. So uh, these are just some of the things I wanted to point out uh, on that particular um, language work that we did. I also wanted to uh, come back to uh, the introduction or introducing ourselves with um, that language and 
the information that's embedded in that and why that particular language uh, work was important for us to, to uh, work with. And the question is overall, um, haki, uh, what that um, two things that that question points out is first of all, that when we go back to our uh, community, if we haven't been there and they don't remember us, the first thing that we get asked is, um, haki, who are you? Because the motivation is that the person who asked that question is trying to position you in the Hopi web of kinship relations. So being able to express who you are, uh, who your mother is, who your father is, what clan you are, and oftentimes, if they don't know your mother, they're going to ask you who your grandmother is in order to situate you in that whole spider web of relationships. The other reason why it's important for us to know this is that it's our entry into the spirit world. Uh, our belief is that there will be um, a, a, a Hopi, the Hopi standing there asking uh, who will, uh, well, who we will approach at the entryway and that person will ask um haki so to be able to uh, identify yourself as a, a hopi person will allow you into the spirit world the other thing uh the process that i wanted to um explain here in teaching this because it was uh, a long process was creating an interactive script where we did a question and answer and took on the roles of a speaker one and speaker two. Uh, we also co-created body notes for this. And then we role played uh, as one person assuming a speaker one and a two position, or actually having two persons talking to each other on that. Uh, and what I wanted to demonstrate here was the comprehension um, that I noticed from this process that was, it took uh, quite a while but when we were able to learn it, it, it was easy to go back and, and test their, um, assess their comprehension and whether it was just a, a case of memorizing or if they actually understood this. So I'm just going to ask um, each one of my learners uh, a question based on their uh, uh, learning uh, how to respond to the question, um, haki. So I'm going to stop share here and I'm going to ask each one of my learners a question about their identity. So, Brandy, um, haki yuta. No, bani kivam yuta. Bam himu wangwa. Bam kau wangwa. Askwali kush ansa. Brooke. Um hakak sino. Na uh sino panak sino. Kus ansa asquali. Bani. Um hin matsiwa. Um haki. Bani. Um himuwa. Nut Bani. Oh, Kalwungwa. Kalwungwa. Just answer as well. Brianna. Yes. Um, Haki Nata. Nut Nazario Felix Nata. Bam Himuwungwa. Bam Castilwungwa. Just answer as well. Kushans. By asking them those questions, uh, I, it really demonstrated to me that they were understanding the language. It was beyond just memorizing it. And uh, it was actually uh, very heartwarming to, to know that. So um, I will go ahead and uh, I also want, I guess what I want to do here is um, ask uh, the girls to, when we were in the process of learning this, uh, one of the important things to do is to uh, create some body notes is what we're calling it, which is gestures to help us remember 
and clue us in. Um, and I'm just gonna, uh, go, well, Brianna, maybe I'll ask you here. Uh, can you remember how we decided um, how to re, um, create a gesture for uh, our clan, Galuangwa? Uh, I remember the gesture. Okay, Galuangwa. And how about um, um, Himu Wungwa? What was that? Himu Wungwa. Uh -huh. That means this one, right? Himu Wungwa. And then how about um, uh, Yuta? Uh, Yuta? Yuta? Yuta. Oh, oh, which one? Is this one? Yuta and Nata. That was nice. Away, away. Um, I think there, let's see, what else? Would, okay, I think we got it all, right? Okay, not I that, so. yeah, yeah. So those were the some of the gestures that we uh, co-created uh, because I needed to ask them, how can you remember this? So those are some of those examples. As well for that, I'm going to back go back to my screen share. Oops, hang on. Sorry. Sorry. This one. And then uh, finally, um, uh, the, the more recent work that we are um, moving into is creating a Hopi world space in our home. Uh, and there is, uh, I got this idea uh, from uh, an author, an author's paper. I'm not sure how to pronounce the name. I think it's Zalmai Zahir, who is, um, who did a webinar and he was sort of reinterpreting this idea of a language nest. Uh, we have learned in the field of language revitalization that a language nest comes from uh, the Maori and the, the Hawaiian people who have used it. And what it is, is about um, creating a, a nest of uh, an immersive uh, language setting for young children. So it's really about focusing uh, on, the, on the learner. However, Zalmai Zahir talks about creating a language nest for the language so that we are concerned about maintaining its vitality and its use. And where that really happens is to find space for it wherever you can, wherever you feel like you can uh, really commit that space to it. So we noticed that when we gathered together, uh, typically it was just about uh, the end of dinner time. And so we were sometimes still eating and um, being Hopi people and social, we have a lot of social activity around food. So we decided to think about uh, creating a space in our home in the kitchen area or the dining area. So we moved to that and um, it, we, we found a number of things is, is finding pictures again for the gestures uh, that were right in, in embedded in our images. The images, again, I selected, uh, but it helped us to understand what happens when you turn a word and what happens to that word when it becomes part of a sentence or part of a communicative um, interaction with someone. Uh, also, there are some words that we don't actually change into Hopi, but we Hopiize it. Uh, and again, our, our question is about appropriate images, but we are still um, needing to uh, work on that. And also learning the cultural uh, protocol of gratitude in this, in this work. So I will just show some images of what we're doing with that currently. Uh, and here it's, it's this uh, process of first of all um, saying, um, Brandy, do you think uh, you can uh, give us the language for this image? Uh, yes. 
the first one for I'm hungry is Nutsung Mokyuta. Uh-huh. And then uh Nusen Hita Nusni. What can I eat? Yes. Thank you. And we've extended that to create um vocabulary for all the kinds of food that we might be interested in, in having. Um, and uh, I, th I thought it was really quite uh, heartwarming that we, we, we found that these are the Hopi Ising kind of words here. Castil Nova, Chino um, Nova. And then we, we got very uh, tonal here. We said Italiano Nova. Uh, and then we moved on to um, uh, Brooke, can you remember what this word is? I'm not sure if I see your cursor. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll just move on. This is breakfast, meat, baked goods, um, fruit, and uh, produce in, in terms of salad. So we learned uh, how to ask, I'm hungry, what can I eat? And these are all possibilities that we could um, uh, develop language around. And we moved on to that by saying, uh, you know, sometimes when you enter a kitchen, someone will be in the process of, of cooking. And these would be, what are you cooking? What did you cook? And then finally asking a question, um, what are you eating? And so we have been able to um, create the script and I just wanna give one example possibly. Um, uh, again, I'll call you, uh, Bri Brianna, I'll call on you this time. Uh, I'm going to ask you this question. Um, let's see, uh, let, let's do this one. Umhita tu moita. What is it? No. Nefni Tumoita. Away. Brandy. Um, let's do um, this one here. Umhita Tumoita. Which one is it? Donut. <laughs> oh, uh, Quang, Quang, one of it. Tumoita. And then, uh, so these, this is just what we're beginning to answer format. It's a possible, it might be a question that comes from the audience. Uh, I guess the only thing I wanted to, I, and we'll just close it at that time, at this time, but Asquali for your um, uh listening to us about this and, and giving us an opportunity to share our work. And Asquali girls, uh, so for helping me out here. Asquali. Asquali. <laughs> I have to say this was really, really beautifully done and um, thank you. And we'll come back in 10 minutes. Again, to remind everybody, do not push the leave button because you won't be able to come back in. Just leave everything on and maybe turn off the video and audio and take a 10 minute break. We'll see you back at 1010. Thank you, ladies. So we are ready to start the Q&A. And um, is everybody back from your team? Oh, I know uh, Brandy, was it? Somebody had to leave, who was yeah, that? Yes. Uh, I'm still here, just uh, I'm not gonna be able to do video. Oh, okay, that's right. Okay, so everybody's here. And um, some people just signed on at 10 o'clock. So <laughs> they're participating in the Q&A. And uh, just so everybody knows, this is being recorded. And for those of you who have registered to participate today, uh, you will be sent a link to the recording. So you can review it, sh uh, make sure those who signed on late, you get to view it. Okay, so you, you won't lose anything. Um, I already have a few questions. If I can get started, would that be all right? And this one, I'd like you to type in the chat, the answer. Michelle is asking, what was the name of the app that you used for recording phrases? And 
you can answer it and then, but make sure you kind of type it, type it somewhere. Thank you. Uh, it was, uh, and, uh, I don't know what the right word, an app platform, whatever it's, it was called Vocaroo. Okay. And, um, yeah, it was, and it's, it's free and it was, it was easy. Um, and you can do it on your phone as well. But I'm not the one to ask about that. Uh, my daughter, Rachel, was the one who helped, helped me with that. Right. And I see that Brooke typed in the answer. So you're, when you go to the Q&A answered section, Bokaru is typed in. Okay, next question. Um, let's see. Was there a sequence of topics from which you started or was it learner generated from Marilyn Johnson? Um, it was both. Um, being the instructor that I am, um, I figured that I needed to have something to go on first. And the very one that naturally came was the roll call. And it wasn't actually something that I thought about. So some of this was um, organic. <laughs> Uh, and it just kind of evolved and it was a response. So in a, in a, I, we would have a, a lesson and, and then a question would come up and then I would bring that in. So um, the, the, the daily expressions, I, I selected some, but then they also added some and that was some, some of those were on the Bokaroo. Mm, thank you. Um, Leandro is asking, how many of the students you have are fluent in the Hopi language? Well, um, there, I guess uh, there's a difference between students uh, or um, learners. And um, these are my learners. They're my family members. So um, it's only those who come every week uh, or those who come you know, to the weekly sessions. And typically it's been these six. We, we did um, send out an invite uh, to at, at least 17 altogether of my family members who I sent the invitation to originally. And uh, several have dropped out, well, actually just one. The others never came the saying that they wanted to, but they couldn't do it but it's the six, which is a family in itself. It's the, you know, the two sisters and the, and the daughters. So it's actually two families. Mm. So they're not really, um, they're not a group of students who come to a class. It's, it's this family who we come together every week. And so none of them are really fluent. No. To answer yeah. the question. Okay. They're all learners. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. This is a question from Sandra Lunt Hill. Uh, she's from Newcomb High School and a couple of her students attended had questions, but they had to leave uh, for another event, but they wanted her to ask first, what are the main words of the Hopi language that you have to know in order to learn the language? Does that make do you understand the question? Okay. Uh, yeah, and, and actually it's, uh, again, it's learner. It's much more learner generated. Uh, and it's also, um, uh, how do I want to say this? Like the, the learning who you are and, and um, introducing yourself mm -hmm. is not a word. It's, it's a practice and a tradition that I said for two reasons being able to go home and respond to someone who asks you who you are and for a very spiritual purpose. It's much more, uh, the lessons are generated from that kind of um, motivation versus words. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good answer. And then she had a second student wanting to know, uh, where did it go? Here we go. What are the, what word do you think would be difficult when someone is learning your language? So I think it's not just word, but I think she means what is the difficult part of learning Hopi? Um, well, I think, I think we address that in terms of um, the sounds. So mm -hmm. I, we did introduce the sounds and 
I really noticed that uh, the way I understand that that was a good thing to do was to, when sometimes when they can't hear me because we're doing it virtually, uh, they'll say, is that a long A or a short A? Or they'll ask me, is that an umlaut O? Uh, is that a Q or a K? So that, that has been really helpful to do that, uh, for them to, to have that as a reference. Uh, in terms of um, the difficulty, it's more about um, having them take what they learned or were introduced to and practicing it outside of the class time, out, outside of the session time. Uh, because I, they're picking up these things and they're picking up things that I wasn't planning on them learning. But the whole thing is it's up to them um, to um, sort of experience something that was meaningful to them and it's relevant to them. And one of the, one of the things that I um, didn't say earlier was that we also learned to sing a song and um, some of the girls, especially Brianna, Brianna might be able to uh, explain her experience with the song better than, than I can. Hello. Um, my experience with the song definitely helped me narrow down the way I say things and work on my, um, I guess my accent, you know, I, I don't want to have to keep remembering wrong ways to pronounce this um, words, but uh, the song definitely helped me feel connected and it helped me, uh, or helped me feel like uh, I was getting somewhere in a sense. I don't know, it, it just, it felt more um, natural. And uh, she also said that um, it was a way that she could bring language into her daily life because sometimes she would just hum the tune and that's important. Um, and other times she would just sing it to herself. So it, it's, it's the fact that if you don't have uh, the time, if the tune just comes to you and you hum it, you're using the language. Um, if you don't have um, anyone to talk to, if you sing the song words out loud, you're using the language. So a song was important um, in that way. Um, and it was a quick, it, they learned that really quick. Thank you. Okay. And we have uh, Naniba is asking, what do you do when your students or learners have a hard time speaking the language? How do you help them get over that? That's me saying, how do you help them? Okay. I would ask my learners to say, um, to answer that because they're the ones who are speaking the language and, and uh, they might be able to answer that a little bit better. So any one of you, um, Brooke, Bonnie or Brandy, Brianna. So for learning this language, um, it's hard to say because we've all grew up well we didn't grow up on res but you know we've heard the language we've been around it so as we're learning it you know you can always go back to those things that we've already you know subconsciously learned so it's easier for us to be able to get the sounds and stuff right but especially it's just you know she's our she's our so so we just ask like are we saying this right what mm -hmm. what part of my mouth are we using because at the very beginning of the of the class, that's literally all our questions. She was just teaching us how to pr pronounce and project what part of the mouth to use. Cause to us online, like she was saying earlier, it all sounds the same. But as we were saying in the presentation, the K and the Q sound very similar, but very different <laughs> parts of the mouth are used. So we just have to keep asking. And, you know, we we want to ask. That's that's another thing that we like, just, we just want to know, like, hey, are we doing this right? Are we doing, are we doing it justice or not? <laughs> so it's really, you know, it's easy to communicate with our family mm -hmm. and ask those questions and be vulnerable in this space, too. I agree with uh, everything that Brandy just said. And another good tool was Vocru, because any time that so it wasn't available, I would refer to the Vocru and our own notes that we did with our own pictures. And that would be another thing too of like the, the whole word itself 
like is it long is it short and that was just another good thing but Brandy really touched up on everything because growing up with not really knowing anything but knowing something uh helped a lot during this learning time I I, I don't know if that answered the question um but just helping uh, I guess what I could say is um based in my own experience of learning my language, um, relearning my language, um, I think they hit it, hit the head, uh, the nail on the head, uh, because not everyone who is a fluent speaker is going to be, can, can get in your shoes. What they say is, um, how come you don't know that? Or you should already know that. Or I already pronounced it for you this many times. How come you're not getting it? So I think my experience of relearning my language, being in the learner's shoe, having these strategies, the, the things I try to do is to be patient, to um, remodel, to re-say, and just to say, it's okay, you just do it. You, 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 this takes a long time, it, it doesn't come fast. Um, so just giving them uh, a space to say, it's going to take time, so you need to be patient with yourself as well. So, Brianna or Bonnie, you, you don't have anything else to add to that? No. Um, no, the only difficulty, I mean, obviously, is that we're not in person. But um, I'm just so glad that, you know, we have video now, and that way I can I have Sheila come closer to the camera sometimes to show me the differences in the sounds like Brandy was talking about, just mm -hmm. to make sure that I am using the correct part of my mouth and not saying incorrect words. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna interject and say, I, I just sense that you were okay and very comfortable and felt safe to make mistakes and to ask questions when necessary. And you were not in fear of any kind of uh, criticism. And I think it seems to work. Is it because you're uh, related, a family affair, or would it, what, what, what would you say that safety comes from, sense of safety comes from? I think the sense of safety comes from that mm -hmm. he is family. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that So'o creates this space where we can ask all these questions. And mm -hmm. when we're given feedback, it's not, you're not doing it right. It's that okay, let's work on just one part for right now. And let's just give me all your questions that you have that I can help you with. I, it's a very safe space for me. And I feel like I'm never judged or ridiculed. So anytime that I'm having difficulty, I feel very comfortable asking those questions. Yeah, so it does provide a very, I don't, yeah, safe space, I guess is a good word for it. But, um, also to us being a family we are we already like joke around and you know make fun of each other so like in this language we know that we're just joking and it's not supposed to be a negative dig or anything and we're all in the same boat we're all gonna be going in the same place so let's just you know figure it out <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, what i can add and i so appreciate um them um sit, being very honest because i tell them the only way I can help you is to, to, uh, to understand what you're feeling. Uh, um, and the other thing is that I want to be in an instruction mode. And so they help balance me out saying, okay, we can talk English here because I'm, I'm very much an oral immersion. Um, I'm committed to oral immersion, but it's not, it's, it's not the ideal conditions for it. But we're seeing we're seeing progress. We're feeling better about it. If, if anything, it's more about reconnecting to each other. I've told them often that I've, I've met with you more times during the last two years than all the years you've been growing up because I meet with them every week now. You know, And before that, it was like, when are you going to come and visit? And it would be years. So now it's all the time. So that's probably the primary, primary thing that's bringing us together. I have so many more questions, but time is running short. So I'm going to no go to the next one. How many hours per day or week do you put towards the uh, this session? Uh, for me, be, um, 
I, I know that uh, I spend Thursdays because we, we meet Thursday night. So typically at least two hours before class, even though I have something in my mind, it's, it's more about finding the right pictures um, and sometimes thinking like, how do I want to say that with the, the script? Uh, you know, so I, I would, I devote about a good two hours to it before class starts, even if it's not actually printing something out, it's just my mind is there. So sometimes it's just um, getting into that space mentally. And then uh, maybe this will be the second to last question. We'll see. Nan Naniba is asking, how did you, I guess Sheila, <laughs> become so fluent in speaking your language as a second le learner, second language learner? I really wish that I had documented my journey because uh, I started this in 1991. Uh, and my advantage was that I never lost my receptive ability of the language, but it, but it definitely has the level, the level of uh, fluency has been the one that I've been working on. And it's the learner identity that I hope I can um, help develop in, in my learners because I just wanted to do it. I think, I think it's not even something I consciously did. I just feel like this was my destiny and it's my responsibility now. And I just, everything that I do is informed by the language, either out loud, hearing it, in my mind, my whole daily life is almost done in the language. Mm. Uh, so it's been, it's, so it's practice. It's practice using it, just using it. And um, it's been a lifestyle change for me. Takes commitment, no? <laughs> I belong uh, in the language. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, athletics of, yeah. Language athletics, you have to do it, do it, do it, do it, yeah. Um, I will ask one more I think we have time for. Uh, let me see, we've answered all these. What fun, act this is Katie Tsosi, what fun activities do you teach while you're, while um, during the learning session? Any fun activities? Um, well, I don't know, um, I, I think uh, it just, de it depends on what you, defined as fun. Everything we're doing together has been fun. <laughs> ah. uh, but if you're talking about a game, um, that is something I want to move into as well. Like we learned that we, I want to do some card games um, with them. So we learned the numbers, mm -hmm. but I haven't actually figured out how to do an inter interactive card game or the right tool to do that yet so um it hasn't gone there but but all of in my mind and what they've told me is that all of this has been fun oh wow yeah i was gonna interject and say uh if i may everything has been fun all the pictures mm -hmm. the songs mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. i was also gonna add when we were doing our introduction saying who we are we did it as so I was saying like the first person would ask the question and the second person would answer that to me was a lot of fun because we would do turns or we would be like, um, hockey, you know, like when some of us were in person, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's a very interactive um, activity, I guess. And especially since we're all doing it via cameras and everything, it's harder to find activities, I guess, to practice like that. But yeah, we, we make it fun because we enjoy the class. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, at this point, I think we have to close, but really, really thank you for the inspiration that you shared with us. And uh, there is one person who said, it's always so inspiring to hear Sheila talk. So <laughs> thank you again, Asquali. Uh -huh. And um, again, the recording will be shared, the link to the recording will be shared. Laura Benavidez, uh, my assistant, will be sending all of you who registered that link. And please share that with your friends and families and students. And um, thank you again for everybody who joined. And um, thank you for the presenter and the panelists. You are awesome. Continue the great work. Peace <laughs> <It's> out. <how. laughs> <It's how. laughs>
Asquali. 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 Asquali.